Okay, so I've started recording now. Um, so I was saying that if you have any questions, please put them at the end of the, of the class or like you can drop them in the comment section. So as I was saying, um, in this, so basically this is what we're going to we want to achieve today. I'm going to introduce you to what product management is, what your expectations should be, um, what are the needs or like the things that people are saying concerning product management that might be true or might not be true. Who is a product manager and what does product management mean? Um, so I intend to complete this before um, before six p.m. Somebody is going to make sure. Okay. Um, so during this period, during this class, these are the things that we'll do. Um, so I'm going to explain the core and basic concepts of product management. Um, I'm going to also explain what product management is not. What are the what's the role product manager, key concepts and responsibilities in product manager, and then we have um, assessments using real life products to ensure that everybody understands and then you have a bit of experience. Um, yes. So I like to tell people that want to transition into product management that it's not enough for you to learn or it's not enough for you to read up. Um, I think it's not very important for you to um, um, what you're learning, right? So, which is what the nursing um, part is about. And then I'm also going to be having uh, questions in between, and we're going to have Kahoot. Um, so I'll have a bit of questions. So you join with the Kahoot link, you participate. Um, there's no winner and there's no loser. So I um, just want to put that out there. So moving on, so what are the needs in product management? So I'm going to share, I'm going to start with Kahoot. I need at least just 10 people to join. Then we are going to start with that. Okay, so you can let me do um, Ishala, you are always not here. Do you have something to say? So please, everyone, go to it. Um, I think I've dropped the link in the chat section. It's the first one. Sorry, the second one, not the first. And this is the link. Oh, this one. Um, Okay. Is anyone having issues joining? That's my screen anymore. Can you see it now? Yes. I don't understand. I'm sorry. Do you want me to share my screen again? I said the only thing I said the only thing I could see here is stop to speak, don't speak in 
Okay, I can't see any presentation. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Can you see my screen now? No, I can't. Is anyone else that can't see my I'm screen? Only see, I can only see. Is anyone else that can't see my screen? Or just not so? Yes, the only thing I can see is the same variety. Your screen is visible. Okay, I can see this one. Yeah, 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 I can run. Okay, um, I think we can stop now. So basically, um, there are two lights and there's one truth. You can practice product management with a computer science, with a computer science degree. Product management is dealing with influence. Product management and project manager are the same. Which one is the truth and where are the lies? Right, next. So just one person got the answer. I didn't even participate. Wow, so. Huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think just people got the answer correctly. Um, yeah, but... um, so the options were showing as just the um, shape icon, the stuff that we're supposed to read. Um, yeah, it's show. the same thing with my own. Okay. Um, another thing is no that questions you know, appeared. And another thing is that I, I couldn't select two, two of the, the lies, so it was only just one truth. So I might as well just select the truth and leave the two lies like I just work. I think yeah. I was thinking of selecting the two lies. You cannot good. For, for you to see the question, you have to look at my screen then participate on your own. So it's better you're using your phone and your laptop or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to continue, yeah. right? Look at me. Please, if your mic is not okay, please do check. Yeah, Okay, so I'm going to continue now. So we have another call session in a few, um, but we're going to continue with the class for now. So that was, I wanted to um, paint what the class is going to look like, right? Um, so for this, now I'm, I'm trying to speak to the needs concerning product management. So for people that are trying to transition, there, there is a lot of information on the internet, and there are lots of things that you have to learn and that you have to do. But these are the things that are true and are not true. So the first thing is you need a computer science degree to practice product management. Um, this is not true, right? A lot of companies might require that, or oh, you have a computer science degree. But I don't think that's a barrier to entry. Um, I'll speak for myself. Um, I studied sociology in school, and sociology completely has nothing to do with product management. So you don't need a computer science degree to practice product management. If I dare to say, you don't need to go to school to um, practice product management. So far as you understand the basics, you can speak English, you can document, um, you can go into product management. Another thing that you hear is you, as a product manager, you are the CEO of your product. And a lot of people say this, but they use it and they say it in a careless term in the sense that as a product manager, um, you're typically responsible for a lot of things. What the product look, looks like, your research and everything. So in a way it is correct, but as a CEO, um, like if you have a business, for example, um, typically you're responsible for making decisions, you're responsible for firing and hiring people. But as a product manager, you're not responsible for any of those. You're only leading based on influence. There's no authority that comes with the role of a product manager. So typically you would, say that product management is more of influencing people to buy into your decision. So I know that someone said that a brand manager, I don't know if there's anyone, someone said that they were into marketing before and stuff like that. So for you to make decisions as a product manager, you need to be able to convince the next person that this is why you're making a decision. And then you need to be able to present data that this is why I'm making this decision. If um, you're working with developers, you're working with marketers, you have no authority. You don't have the right to fire anybody. Right. All you have to do is just make sure that everybody's working together for the good of that product. That's typically what you're responsible for. 
um, product management is a generalist role. I don't know if you know what it means to be generalist, but being generalist means that you are the master of everything. Like um, you're a jack of everything, master of none. You need to know a little bit about everything in the sense that you're working with different people. As a product manager, you are speaking to sales, you're speaking to marketing, you're speaking to design, you're speaking to engineering. And in all of these people, they know their jobs better than you do. Um, so all you can do is speak to them to understand um, and to help you achieve your goal, right? So as a product manager, you need to be able to um, fit into those conversations. You need to be able to ask questions comfortably and be able to also make mistakes. So it's not as if like it's a specialist role, like you're a surgeon, um, so it's a generalist role. So some days like you might shift, you might be a user researcher, other days you are helping people test your, um, you're testing your product, right? Another day um, you're drafting requirements. So the role of a product manager is more generalist than it's a specialist role. The role of a product, product manager and product manager is the same. This is a lie. A project manager is not the same thing as a product manager, right? Um, and I would explain this from the aspect of what a project is. A project is something that has a start date and has an end date, right? And there's typically a goal in mind for that. So there's time, there's cost that is applicable to projects, right? So the project manager is typically responsible for that project at the beginning of the project and at the end. So he, does, he or she does reporting on that business. But product management is different than project management, right? You might see a product manager and a project manager working hand in hand to achieve a goal, but they're not necessarily doing the same job. And I'm going to explain the role of a product manager in a few minutes. Please, if you have any questions, please just drop them in the chat. So I'm going to first explain how the role of a product manager of product management came to be, right? Um, I don't know if we're all familiar with um, Procter & Gamble. Um, Procter & Gamble is an FMCG company. As I said earlier, FMCG, FMCG means fast moving consumer goods. So these are like the makers of Ariel, um, use always pad, or I'm sure you've seen it in the market, right? People that sell pad, um, stuff like that. So that's what they do. And it was first popularized in 1931 by Neil McElroy. I think it's very important that you pay attention to this. Um, and in when it first started, it started as uh, product management wasn't referred to as product management. It was referred to uh, with the concept of brand name, right? So as I earlier mentioned, um, Procter & Gamble is like a parent company to different brands. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And typically, um, Mac, um, McElroy wanted brand men to be responsible for each of these brands in the sense that you're responsible for making a decision. You're responsible for seeing how that brand goes from ideation to being in the market. And then for everything, you are the voice of the customer, basically. So if, for example, you're in charge of aerial soap, Right, you're responsible that the formula that they're using for that soap is able to wash clothes cleanly. Is um, it smells nice? It doesn't smell bad. Um, you also have to put into uh, into perspective the locations that are using it. Um, the way soap works in London is it the same way it works in India? Is that the same way it works in Nigeria? If you're going to do a costing, you have to make sure that the cost um, is also reflective of the areas. So, if for example, you're the brand manager or the brand man for Ariel, you know that you can't say that Ariel is going to be 10 pounds because the standard of living um, and cost of living in Nigeria is different from that in London. So it, it differs, right? So you need to be able to mark this cost. So basically the role of a brand man was very, very incorporative of a lot of things, right? So basically you are responsible for how like your shipments goes from the factory to the market, right? So if there's any problem with that product, if it's if you know that you need to ship aerial, you need to make sure that as it's going from the factory to the um, supermarket, it goes there um, in one piece. You are sent, you are selling, you are sending out the right amount and the right um, type, right? And you have to do the documentation as well. You have to ensure that um, everything is compatible across board. So it means that if I see aerial in London, I see aerial in Nigeria, and I see aerial in India, there must be like a uh, a unique branding concerning it, and then it all has like the same identity, right? It's not as if I will see Ariel here um, in London, and then it looks, um, there's a different message than the one that is in London and stuff like that. So they're also responsible for studying the brand, finding um, a weakness, um, developing the plans, 
and stuff like that. So basically, you have to obtain support and obtain authority from the support manager. And this in itself basically speaks to the role of a product manager. Literally, this is what product management is about, right? You need to be able to study the brand they're giving you. So if they're giving you area that, okay, um, Diola, you're responsible for area of soap. Um, all you need to do is you need to be able to find the issue. What is the issue of area? What, pro what problem are you trying to solve? What is it that, what is the weakness of Ariel in the market? Is Ariel performing well or it's not? If it's not performing well, why is it that Ariel is performing weakly in the market? And then you've now seen, okay, these are the problems that Ariel is having. And then you're responsible for drawing up a plan, right? And then you've outlined that plan and you need to be able to sell that plan to the support uh, manager. The support manager now is someone that is above you, right? So you report to the support manager and stuff like that. So basically in a nutshell, you are taking full responsibility for everything in that brand. So in a way, um, product management is, um, is very inclusive. And that's why you see that some people, if you speak to some product managers, they refer to their product as their babies, right? Because you're responsible for anything. If the product works or the product does not work, right? You are fully responsible for that, right? So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Uh, so basically, I was saying that product management is putting decision-making as closely as possible to the customer and you're the voice of the customer. So now what is product management, right? I've already said a lot of things. I've said that this is what the brand men do. This is what product management is not, right? I've also given you an idea of what the role of a product manager would be and um, taking from the concept of a brand man. So I don't know, is there anybody that wants to um, answer what do you think product management is and what is the role of a product manager? You can raise up your hands and then I'll pick uh, volunteers. Anybody? Is anybody that wants to um, answer what product management is? I know a lot of people are trying to transition. Um, you've been exposed to a lot of information, right? Let's Let's see, okay. Jessica, you can omit your mic and answer. Okay. Um, so a product manager is one, like you said, that is responsible for a particular product. It could be a tech product. It could be a commercial, like normal, like day-to-day um, -day products, like you said, Ariel. Um, so as a product manager, your role is to make sure that, you know, your customers are satisfied your business, like the, that the company, your company is also satisfied. So, so what that means is that you're gonna have like a metrics to say, okay, uh, my customers are, they love this product and you know, any issues that they have, you know, they, you, you can take note of it, improve on the product and ensure that the customer is having the value of that product. And subsequently you also have to innovate that product okay what is you have to make a market research and say okay what is currently in the market how are other people doing it are they doing it um better or you know so it's like you're going to improve the product so you're basically in charge of the product till end of life so it's like the product is yours till end of life that means supporting um improving and then again as a product manager you also have to work with different cross-functional team Mm -hmm. um, so depends depend on the, the like I said, depend on the industry. Let's, I'll speak with tech because I'm in tech. So for instance, you're doing like a software, if you own a digital product, you work with the UX guys, um, that's product design, you work with um, project managers, you work with um, support, you work with operations, so you work with sales, you work with marketing. So there are a lot of so you have to like have that relationship with them and also be on board in everything they are doing. So that means you'll, you'll be carried along and you make sure that you document everything. So that means also you also give your roadmap. So that yeah. means you would have to convince them and say, okay, this is what where I want this product to go. This is what the customer says they want. Then you're going to your drawing board and say, okay, these are the futures that you have to prioritize to build. These are the features that the customer say they want, they, they need, they, they want to, you know, get into, and then this is what we should focus on. So you have to convince them. And like you said, it's not an authority role, like to fire anybody, it's just you just managing and making sure that that product is, you know, being what the customer wants and also for, for the business wise as well. So. Yes, thanks, Jessica. I think that was a very comprehensive answer. Um, Charles, do you want to take an answer? Uh, just in like 30 seconds. 
Yeah, I think Jessica Jessica said it all. So the product and the pro, the product manager is like an intermediary between the product owner, the developers, the customers, or consumers. So the product manager knows the mind. He should know the mind of the consumer. He stands in the he stands in the gap of the like a consumer. Check the product if it to be acceptable to the end users and make sure it keeps the time, manage the team to, um, to keep to time and also get ideas to, to research about and look that, okay, how would this idea impact our product? So I would say Jessica said it all, so that's just it. Thanks, Charles. Um, there's something that you spoke about that I think I particularly liked yeah. was the fact that you said that um, you're responsible for bringing the team together and then you're getting ideas. The truth is like as a product manager, you don't have the best ideas and you can't, you can't know it all. And that's why like you have to work with different people yes. in different roles to achieve a goal. Thanks, Charles. Um, Abdul Rahman, that's going to be the last question I'll take before we continue on to finish by six on the dot. Abdul Rahman. Um, okay, I'm not sure what happened. Um, so we're just going to continue. I'll share my screen again. Um, so a product manager is typically the a middleman, right? You're responsible for developing a new product. You are typically responsible for managing existing products. And different in different organizations and different companies, they refer to product management as different things, right? In Microsoft, sometimes they refer to their product managers as program managers, right? Some people refer to it as product development managers. So depending on the company, depending on the country, depending where you are, and depending on the structure that has been put in place in that company, right? Um, product management basically differs, right? Um, and pr a product manager is typically charged with the success and the failure of a product, but you have no direct authority. So you are responsible for how the product looks like. Typically, you are the voice of the customer. Um, and the truth is you do not know the mind of any customer, right? And I'll give it to you like this. There's something called the job to, the, um, job to be done concept in product management. And I'm going to use the concept of a car. And um, I don't know if there's anyone that has seen this um, picture of a car where they said the, one person says they want to get from one place to another place. Um, there was a tire, another person was a scooter, another person was a bike, right? So if you speak to your customer, they will tell you that they all want different things. And the truth is like, you cannot cater to the different things that your customers want because they might all want different things. Your job as a product manager is to understand what, what is the goal that they want to achieve? What is the problem that they're trying to achieve and build the product around that concept? So um, for the person that wanted that, um, for customers now that said that they wanted to build a product, right? Or they wanted a car or like they wanted a tire or um, it was a scooter, right? It, it was left in the, in the case of that person, right? The product manager came up with the idea and said, okay, what is the problem, right? And brainstormed with every other person and that's how they came up with the car, right? If you had listened to the different people, so if I had listened to Jessica, if I had listened to Imole, if I had listened to um, Dilla and I had listened to Chidiberry, and they told me that this is what I want my car to, this is what I want. I want to move from one place to another place and you had to deliver to them, right? Uh, what you would deliver to each one of those people would differ, right? And this is why like as product managers, you are responsible for understanding the why. You need to understand the problem. So product management is really about you doing a lot of understanding and doing a lot of research, right? In the sense that, so um, Jessica will come to you. I can see that your hand is raised. Um, so, for example, the pe um, people that came up with the concept of fintech, right? Being able to send money with your phone number, right? Um, the way you might have told them the problem is you are tired of going to the bank. You might be that, oh, ah, why do I have to open, open 1 million bank accounts? That might have been the problem. And the solution might just be that for you at that time is that, oh, I want all my bank accounts to just be in one place. I don't want to have like a UBE. I don't want to have like a Zenith. I don't want to have like a CUDA right? And you don't want to have to do all the, like present these same documents over and over again, because typically what you realize is you have to open an account here, 
the document you present in bank A is what you present in bank B and that's what you present in bank C, right? So typically that's what all of them want to do. Now for people that now came up with the idea of banking with your phone number, right? Which is typically what AO does is, oh, how can we help people you know, reduce this friction of like having to open bank A, bank B, bank C and like bring your BVN, bring your phone number, bring all of that and having to remember, everybody has a phone number. You don't always have to go to the bank, right? So you now they came up with the idea of like, okay, let's Adiola, let Tommy see, let um, Chideberry use a phone or use his phone to bank on their phone because like that's like the simplest thing. You don't have to remember any brand new number because you already have your phone number. Everybody has a phone number. It's easier for you to send money. So what I'm just trying to explain basically is that Product managers are responsible for understanding the why of a product. You need to understand what you are solving for before you even start solving for it. And you have to be the voice of the customer, right? Because typically you are reporting to the CEO, you are reporting to the CTO, you are, responding, um, you are re uh, reporting to the CTO, and they all have different um, agendas. The CEO wants to have a great company, and that person wants to deliver the best technology, and that person wants to have and make sure that the company is making money. In all of this, what's your role? Your own role is to solve a problem. So from ideation to development, as Jessica also mentioned, to the end of life, to that product dies or might not die, you're responsible for making sure that that product makes an impact in the market. Um, do you guys understand? Um, Jessica, you're raising up your hand. Do you want to, can you, I'm going to come back to you. Let me finish this. Oh, it was the previous hand. I just, I just lowered it. It was the previous hand. So, so um, product management is a cross-functional team and um, you are speaking to different people that every day. So I'm going to be speaking to my designer. Your designer is the person that is going to design how the product looks. So for example, you're seeing my screen now. There's somebody that designed it. This is not, it did not just come from somewhere. Some, you, um, a product man manager might have defined how this should look like, how should it work. The designer is a person that takes those requirements and then builds it out, right? Um, you're working with engineering. Engineering has to take this nice interface and these nice things that you have written and make sure that this thing is working, right? So now you are pressing your phone. Um, so how did that idea come? Do you maybe ask yourself that question? Is uh, the company, the product manager said, that, okay, this is the problem we're trying to solve. This is how we should look. Somebody has gone ahead to write that code. Somebody else has gone to test it. Right, that's where you have your QA people, you have software testers testing what might have been developed, right? And then you have sales. Now, um, the truth is, like, no matter how a business might function, at the end of the day, every business needs to make money. If you don't make money, then there's a problem, right? Because your salaries need to be paid, you need to be de delivering some sort of value. And if your company is not making money, then there's going to be a problem. People are going to be fired, right? You won't have enough money to feed. So that's where marketing and that's where sales come in. And in some companies, marketing and sales are fused into just one department. And in some companies, there are two different departments. Uh, marketing in some companies might be putting the product in the face of the customer, right? You as a product manager, you've done your research, you've done whatever you need to do. Now, the marketing team is responsible for how the product is felt in the market, right? So I'll give an example of Kuda. Kuda is, is a company that does great marketing. If you open Instagram today, you see Kuda Day. If you open Snapchat today, you see Kuda Day. If you like you like even if you're playing um, games or you're using Duolingo, at some point, if you're using the free version of Duolingo, you will see some ad of um, Kuda, right? And it's typically the sales um, marketing team that is responsible. If you work in a business um, business sector, right, you will know that like the sales team is responsible for taking that product that you built to the first to the sell um, to the customer. So if, for example, I want to sell something to MTN, somebody said they worked in MTN, right? So if I want to sell something to MTN, the advert I'm doing might not necessarily work for MTN because MTN is a bigger brand. Do you understand? I might need to go and, as a sales team, I will approach the other sales team in uh, MTN and say, oh, I have this product, this is what it does. And then, then I say, okay, fine, right? So all in all, in not sure, what I'm trying to explain is like, as a product manager, like you're in a functional place and then you are dealing with a lot of people. And, and I also try want to say something is that 
while you were speaking to these people, everybody, and this is like a downside to it, right? Um, and that's the actual reality. A lot of people feel like they know their job better than, um, they know your job better than you do, right? So the designer has an idea of what the product should look like. The engineer feels like the product should work like this. Marketing feels like, marketing is saying, no, why can't the product be like this? Sales is saying, this is what they want. This is not what we should do. As the product manager, you are responsible for taking all these opinions and then making them buy into the idea and the vision of what your product should look like. And I, I was explaining about using a car, how somebody wanted it, want to be a tire, and that person wanted it to be a scooter, but at the end of the day, you came up with a car. You came up with something that has four wheels. Somebody was asking for one wheel, another person was asking for two, but why did you come up with four? Have you ever wondered that it might have caused problems, right? Because sales will say, this is not what the customer said they wanted, right? Marketing will have said, this is not what we said we're going to do. Engineering is like, um, instead of using four tires, why not use six? Then that um, um, design will say, do you know what? It's better for us not to use tires at all. It's going to be so cool, right? Well, as a product manager, you can see that everybody has different ideas. All you have to do is, you know, convince people into the vision that you're trying to sell people. Um, and that's the first thing, because you need to also be able to bring these people together because you having a united front with all of these departments is also what helps you to convince your customer. Do you understand? Um, are there any questions at this time before I continue? Does anybody that has any question? Do we understand? Can anybody hear me? Um, okay. Yeah, but okay, no questions. All right, if you have any questions, please note them down. I will address it at the end of the session. So now, um, this is another definition, right? Um, this is from Atlassian, right? Atlassian defines product management as an organizational fu um, func um, function, right? That guides, product, um, that guides the product life cycle. So from development to product, um, to positioning, to pricing, um, and making sure that you are solving for the customer. The truth is product management is like a relationship management stuff, basically. Like if I, if I guess it like that, you're trying to maintain a relationship with your customer. You're trying to maintain a relationship within your organization, with your CTO, with your CEO, with marketing, with sales, and uh, with engineering. But you need to know that like you're responsible for the product at each, each stage. So while, you are trying to come up with an idea, right? So I can say, Imole, I have this great idea, right? Or the CEO has told me I have this great idea. Then I'll say, okay, tell me, say, work with this idea. I'm responsible for that idea in the sense that I have to go and do my research and I need to make sure that there's a market for that, uh, for that idea. And then I have to define how the, pro uh, the customer is going to approach that product. So now I've said, okay, this is a nice idea. How do people find that? How do people find me, right? As a product manager, you are responsible for that. Once you go into development, right, you are also responsible for how um, the product works. You are responsible for writing your user stories. Um, and as a, I need to say this, as a product manager, you need to document every single thing that pertains to your product. You need to always document part time. Like that is the soul and the and everything of product management, you have to document. So the engineers are working with your documentation. They will come and ask you, you need to be able to point back to something, right? You need to document and document. Now, engineering does their work. You're responsible for seeing that what engineering has built, um, it matches up to what you documented, right? So I said I wanted ABC. Did you do BC? Did you do CD? It needs to match that particular requirement that you define, right? And when you are going to position, we need to work with marketing to say that this is how the, uh, the product is positioned in the market. And then for pricing, you need to also do your research for pricing. We are saying that if we want to, um, maybe there's Kuda, there's AOO, there's Zenit Bank. Um, so what is going to make us a better product? What's going to make us better than Zenit Bank? What's going to make us better than Kuda? Um, do you understand? Are we going to say that we're going to have 25 free transfers in a month? Um, are we going to say that our um, cards are free. Are we going to say that you can transfer without paying any transaction charge and stuff like that? What exactly are you selling to the customer? Uh, so as much as possible to build the best product, you need to constantly speak for 
the customer. And you might ask, how do you speak for the customer? How do you ensure that you are the voice of the customer? And in as much as we examine this in other classes and other sessions, I'm just going to try and answer that question now. So basically, you speaking for the customer can work in different ways. It could work through surveys. You, are, you might see like someone is sharing you a Google form or sharing you survey monkey and saying that, oh, please answer these questions in two minutes. Or they might just, be, you know, it could just be um, surveys, right? And that's the qualitative um, part of it, right? It could be that you are getting data from a company, a data company and stuff like that. It could also be that you are listening to the customer via calls, you're doing a, a, a focus group session, right? You're speaking to people and asking them, oh, Diola, you use my product. What's your experience like? Um, how can I make this product better? Um, is there any issue that you're experiencing? What if you were to use another product today? Why would you use another product and leave mine? Right, because as a cost, as a product manager, you also need to ensure that people are not leaving your product and going to other products. It's very, very important because you need to make money at the end of the day, right? So these are the things that, like you, as a product manager, this is what you're doing. So you need to make sure that each time you are speaking for the customer, the customer's voice is heard, and you listen. Like you just need to make sure that at each time you're listening to them. So um, that is what Lucian defines um, product management as. I can see four comments. So someone asked a question, can product manager and use UX designer be used interchangeably? Um, I would say no, in the sense that a product manager and a product manager's work is more, is broader than a UX designer in the sense that UX designers are responsible for designing, right? And they're responsible for ensuring that the document, um, the experience, it leads up to what the product manager has defined. Whereas the product manager, you are responsible for determining the why of how the product should work like. You are going to work with a UX designer, right? The UX designer is not the product manager. However, UX designers can also be product managers. Like you can transition to the role of a product manager, right? But UX designers and product managers are not the same thing. They all work um, differently. I don't know if that answers your question. Um, yeah, and as Jessica said, product design um, is a combination of UI and UX design. It depends on the one that you want to focus on. So I'm going to continue now. Yeah, so these are like other people defining product management. I think it's literally the same thing I've said. So a product manager is responsible for uh, managing existing products. You are responsible for the success of a product or multiple products. So it might not be one, it might be two, it might be three products you're responsible for. And product management is basically cross-functional. And what are the key skills? What are the things that you need as a product manager? For me, if you wake me up in the middle of the night and say, Tommy, see, I want to be a great product manager. What is the great, what is, what is the number one thing I need to know how to do? And I think that's something that everybody has, it's just that some people are better at it than others. I think the first thing is communication you need to be able to communicate clearly. Everybody needs, like the message you're trying to pass across needs to be understood the way you intended it to be understood, right? Effective communication, either you're writing, you are speaking, whatever you are doing, you need to be able to communicate clearly because in, I've said earlier that documentation is the soul of product management, right? So if you're documenting and someone that is not in your team, in your company, should be able to read that documentation such that they can understand. They don't need to come and say, oh, where is Adiola? Where is Jessica? Can Jessica come and explain this document to me? Nobody needs to come and call you and say, please explain to me. Your documentation should be so great that once they read it, right, they understand the message you're trying to pass across. And the second thing for me is empathy because you would realize that in all of this that I'm saying, for you to be productive as a product manager, right? You need to, you are relying on a lot of people. Now, the truth is, in as much as you're responsible for the success of the product, there is no product without the designer. There is no product without the engineer. There is no product without a QA person. The product would not succeed if it's not in the face of the customer. And that means that sales and marketing is just as important as you are. Right, so you need to have empathy and emotional intelligence to 
um, deliver a product. So I would say that in as much as you're managing a product, you're also, the, you're also managing people. And no two individuals are the same, right? The way Kunle works is the way is different from the way Adibayo would work, right? Uh, the personality of Kunle and the personality of Adibayo will be different. I, for example, I'm very introverted. There are some people that are extroverted, right? There are some people that they work very well under pressure. There are some people that they don't work well under pressure at all. Some people don't want you to talk to them while they're working. They can only answer you after they finish working. Some people work better in the day. Some people work better in the night. And as a product manager, you need to be able to understand each one of these people and fit into their context. Because if you do not, you're going to have friction and you're going to have a problem with your team. Do you understand? Because typically, the product management team consists of the product manager, the designer, the engineer, the QA person, customer success, sales, and marketing. So in a way, you're not working alone, right? You need to be able to manage all of these people. Even your all of these people are stakeholders, right? You need to be able to speak to them. You need to be able to understand them. Even if you don't understand, you need to be able to put yourself in that position. And I will explain. So I, I think Nigeria is the best example for this. So um, Buari is the president of Nigeria, as we all know, right? And there's a lot of things going on. And if Wari was to be a product manager, I would say that Wari is doing a very terrible job of doing that because he has man he's managing Nigeria, unless in Nigeria is a product, right? Do you think he's listening to anybody? Do you think that he's emotionally intelligent enough to understand the citizens and stuff like that? So like as a product manager, he's responsible for you to, like it's very important for you to have enough empathy and emotional intelligence, right? You need to be able to speak to people carefully, even if you're having a bad day, even if God forbid somebody dies, right? Or um, or say like you are having a very bad day, you woke up, you wore white today and somebody put green paint on it. Like you cannot come to the office or you can't be managing a team and you will come and be raising your voice. If you have anger management issues, you need to be able to, I don't know, like you have to go and deal with it. Like you can't be a product manager and have anger management issues because people are different. You need to be very, very, very patient as a product manager, but you also need to learn to be assertive, right? Because you have a goal, you have a vision, you need to be able to al allow people buy into that vision of you as a product manager and for the product. Do you understand? Um, can I get the deck after the class? Sure, you can do that. I'm recording it as well. Um, another thing is time management, um, problem solving. So I'm going to talk about problem solving before I talk about time management. So as a product manager, you are solving a problem, right? And I've mentioned earlier, as a product manager, you're responsible for understanding the why. And because a lot of people have different expectations. They want something to look like this. I want your product to fly. I want your product to be, an, um, to be a train. I want, your product, I want your product to be a wheelbarrow. Like at the end of the day, what do you want to achieve? Do you understand? You're responsible for understanding the why. So you must be good at problem solving. And the truth is like, if you're not great at problem solving now, the great thing about it is like, it gets better with time. Once you start today, you can do it. You see that some people started, um, some entrepreneurs before they made it, right? They came up with an idea, the product failed, came up with a second idea, it failed. They're just like the person that came up with the light bulb, right? He tried 99 times before it became perfect the 100 time. So he tried it the first time, probably made a mistake, tried the second time, it became better. So the more you practice, like you become better in product management with practice, right? You practice, like for example, if I look back at the first problem I was solving as a product manager, I'll probably be very embarrassed because I'm like, why did I even do that in the first place? But the truth is I'm better for it today because I learned from that experience I had initially. So problem solving is very, very important as a product manager. Then the next thing is time management. So as a product manager, right, you need to attach timelines and deadlines to lots of things. So I'll give you an example. In my team, I might be developing a new feature and the customer says, I want this feature now, now, now. So that person said, I should have had this feature like three weeks ago. Business is, I have revenue goals. How do, like, when can I get this feature? So yours is, you need to be able to manage time and you need to be able to manage people to deliver. So you're not responsible for saying you're going to finish in April. 
who told you that you finish in april like you need to be able to go and meet your engineers and say guys we have this goal how do we how do i get um when can we finish right if we put all the things we have together all the um all the knowledge we have now how we'll be able to you know deliver yours is to go and present what your team has said you cannot just go and say they tell you okay Tom, i want to build nigeria where can i finish I finish in a day go engineering says you'll finish in two years so who is going to what is the source of truth at the end of the day Tom, you're not the one building the product it's the engineering team that's going to build it so why did you give one day as opposed to two years so you need to be able to manage time manage expectations and manage people for that then so i've spoken about documentation the next thing is strategy so basically like um you positioning your product how your product is perceived understanding the um, customer discovery process is your role um is a key skill in that product manager and product road mapping but then again as i said earlier all of these will be learned with time so you get better at it with time um there is a comment okay so thank you uh, so as a program manager the, these are things that you need right there are lots more um, but these are the only ones that I'm going to examine today. Um, so tools you need as a product manager, you need Jira and Trello. Um, the other products that do similar, there's Monday.com, there's Asana, but you need this for assigning tasks and project management. Um, G Suite, that's like Google, um, sorry. This is um, Google Sheets, Google Doc. If you use Notion, then great for you. Um, so the entire Google um, products, we might need that. So you need Slack and Google Teams for communication with your team, um, Hotjar, Google Analytics, and Mixpanel for tracking how your product is being used. Mm -hmm. What about AHA? You can use AHA, like, as I said, like this is not exhaustive, but I think that these are the ones that I recommend. I use them a lot, so that's why I recommend this, um, yeah. So importance of a product manager. So you might find yourself in an organization where there are no product managers. You might find yourself where there are already product managers, right? And if you're a CEO and you want to be the business, right? You can, um, you ask yourself, why do you need a product manager? First of all, you need your product manager to understand your customers better, right? That's basically what product managers, you're understanding somebody. Do you get um second thing is you also need product managers to under um, implement your business strategy while on um, playing the role of a market advocate so basically what does the business need what is the market thing what is the customer what does the customer want you bring this together boom you're awesome already that's your role as a product manager and that's why you're very very important to your business so um the next thing is product managers are expected you're responsible for communicating effectively with all your stakeholders. So the people, your CEO, your CTO, your engineering manager, your marketing manager, your sales manager, everybody that you're talking to are all stakeholders. Even your customers are stakeholders, right? So you need to be able to communicate with them effectively. And that's like why you are, that's one of the great things of being a product manager. Um, so in summary, well, um, what is the role of a product manager? Um, you're responsible for understanding business requirements, business strategy, and effective communication. I think I already mentioned that earlier. Um, so I'm going to pause now. I'm going to stop sharing for a bit, and I'll allow people to ask questions before we go into the next thing. Questions? Can anybody hear me? Did we understand feedback? I didn't know questions. Are we going to see that we understood or we did not understand? Because that would be concerning. Yeah, with this, um, so me, I will say that I understand everything. So, and nice. So, look at other people. I don't have any question for me. Okay, thank you. So, um, I have a question for, sorry, I think it was Chizoba. Yes, Chizoba. So, I, do you think that you can differentiate between a product manager and a product designer or a UX designer? Is she over still here? If you're speaking, you're muted. Um, 
Hmm. 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 Okay, do you understand um, the difference now? Um, Joshua, you asked a question about aha. Have you used aha before? All right, you're welcome. Because I need people to ask questions. Oh. And Joshua, I don't know if you can hear me. I hope everybody can hear me. Jessica, your, hands are, your hand is up. I just trying to ask like the career path for product manager. Like, can you explain? I think that's a good question. So for different organizations, it looks differently and it works differently, right? But typically, in a nutshell, it goes from associate product. That's typically when you're new to product management. Then you go into being a product manager. At this point, you are a mid-level product manager. Then you move to being a senior PM. Um, so senior PM, you demonstrated excellence. You've done great as a product manager. You move to being a senior PM. For some organizations, you, after being a senior PM, it's either you start managing other product managers, um, and you can do that as a senior PM, or you can become a staff PM or a group PM. So that means you become a PM for the entire group so like google now has like a group of companies group of products stuff like that you can become a staff or you can become a group pm then you can become a vp of products and then you can become head of products right but the great thing about product management is you can always switch to other things so you can be products manager and decide that you can be a... somebody's mic is name is Okay, so you can say that, okay, your product manager today, tomorrow you want to focus on marketing, you want to focus on sales, you want to be a designer. Um, so it's really flexible. But then again, this is not cast in stone. It depends on where you find yourself as a product manager, right? And you find some product manager saying that, you know, I don't want to uh, work for anybody anymore. I want to go and establish my company because I have enough experience. There's stuff like that. Some product managers, are technical and others are not technical. Uh, I don't know if that answers the question. Um, yes, uh, uh, sorry, I wanted to add, um, can you differentiate between um, product management and program management? Because like you said, you said Microsoft, you know, used the name program. Um, is there any much difference between those two? Uh, so for, that's right. okay. So for Microsoft, at least for people I've spoken to there, they said that program management and product management is the same thing, right? But in some organization, programs are like projects. So like you might have like, okay, you will have this particular thing you want to um, you want to achieve that then it's called a program. You assign a pro program manager to it to see that everything works fine and you're delivering on what you need to deliver to. And you might need a product to deliver that. You might also have project managers that are working together. So Sometimes um, is just uh, what's it called? It, they're called their titles, right? Some of them literally mean the same thing. Cause like I know that somebody has told me and said that uh, if you see program management, it just means product management. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but I have a question. Thank you. you um, you're welcome, Jessica. Someone else is raising up their hand. Uh, Michelle, I'll come to you. And Dami, I've seen your question. So. You've had product managers, right? So as a product manager, do I need to know how to code or not? So what is it like, do you think as a product manager, you need to be technical or not? Um, I mean, are you trying to answer my question? No, I'm trying to ask a question actually. Okay, sorry, I will come to you. Um, Joshua, you're as asking, a why do startups use UX designers and product managers as one job title, is it because of finance? Typically, yes. Um, and I also mentioned that if you're a designer, it's easier for you to become a product manager because typically you guys are working, you're doing the same thing, you're trying to understand the customer. Whatever you are designing has to speak to the customer. So yes, but then again, I, I don't work at the startups, so I can't really say for sure. Um, Chizaba says, no, I don't need you to, you don't, I don't think you need to be technical. Why? Why, why do you think I, you don't need to be technical?
I need, I need people to answer. Do you think like now somebody somebody said that they write code on the call? I don't I can't remember what, what that person was, right? But do you think it's important that you must learn to code as a product manager? I need people to answer because this is a lot of this will actually come up. People would ask you this question. And if you're trying to apply for some roles, they will ask you this question as well. So what else you take? She's about are you trying to answer or you're trying to ask a question? No, if you ask me why, or why, she's about you can unmute your mic. Yanu, why? Hello, I to me, can you hear me? Yes, I can. To me, I don't think that is the first and foremost skill as a product manager. Like, if you want to transition into product management, to me, I don't feel like that is the first thing you need to bother yourself with. Oh, let me go and learn how to code or be technical before I can be a good product manager. But there's no, there's nothing wrong with acquiring the skill on the long run, actually. Because no knowledge is a waste. And as a product um, manager, you might need one or two places to apply this technical skill. So for me, I don't think, it, quote unquote, that is the first thing you need to learn as a product manager. I don't think I, did I make any sense? Did I yes. get that? You did. You did. Um, I think for me, I, think I particularly like the fact that you said that no knowledge is a waste. Um, thanks for that. Joshua, you said no, it's not important to ask. If you ask me, I'm asking you why. Okay, um, thank you. So I, why I feel it's not important is, uh, okay, let me use myself as, as an example. Well, I, I ran away from codes back during my undergraduate. So I started off as a graphic designer, then headed down to being a brand strategist. And, um, you know, I was just thinking of a way I could just you know, suck from the milk and honey of technology. And I felt like, okay, product management is the way to go. Even if at all currently I'm pursuing a career in UDX management, but I feel okay, every part of tech really does not need coding. And it's not necessary because you have to with so many other stakeholders. As you have your engineers with you, your software engineers who are you know, who their own job role specifically is to, you know, is to write the codes after the, the prototype and, you know, put the codes to test before launch. And, um, well, <laughs> if you want to do that, like the other speakers, knowledge is waste. Probably when you want to build your own portfolio with maybe um, WIX, Wix.com, you can, you know, probably learn, you can just learn code so that you can be able to, you know, have your own custom website and design it to taste, you know, to have where you can have your portfolio and all. So if, this is what I Yeah, I think that you run your um, code and you're answering, but yes, I think you're, you're right. Um, thanks for that contribution. Um, Esther. Esther and Akinla D, I would like to know why you said that. Ore and Yano, I'm coming for, to you guys in a minute. Um, why do you think? I think I want to hear Akinla D because he's the only one that says that he thinks it's necessary for you to be technical. Um, why? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, um, for me, maybe the ground is in the development part. I'm a, I'm a coder, let me put it that way. So, and um, I've had calls to actually manage some projects, even while um, being a developer on the other side. And um, I noticed it is easier to manage developers, especially and designers, um, if you have idea of what they are actually trying to do more i have not really worked with a big firm but some of the startup which i have helped manage their project and that is why i stated that i think if you understand what 
each of them wants to do. It helps you manage them better and understand when they are having maybe a stopgap or an issue with implementing some things at some point. So that was just my reason for my answer. Nice, thanks Akinladi. Esther, do you want to maybe share why it's not necessary? Um, okay, so um, it might be helpful for you to be able to like, you know, have a good rapport with um, those who really have to do with the um, technical skills and all of those things. Because for instance, if they want to, in quotes, bobo you, say it's going to take a while for me. <laughs> so maybe something that could take like eight days or so and then they're telling you it's in two months but then because you have an idea you can you know like be able to like get them back on track and work with your timeline and all but for yourself um i think as a pm what you majorly need to focus on is ensuring that um what needs to get done as regards okay, for the customer side, for the um, business side, and for the um, technical side, that everything is on track and everything gets done. You, your work is majorly to work on it, not necessarily in it. I don't know if I'm using the right terms. So mm -hmm. you might want to play around yourself. Maybe you have, it's a small company, you are bootstrapping, or maybe it's a, a personal product you are working on as a project for yourself and all. Then yeah. those skills can come in handy. But like, you don't necessarily have to be the one sitting down to do it because you are dealing um, with a lot of stakeholders and most of your work is like getting everybody you know, doing the work they're supposed to be doing, you don't necessarily have to be the one sitting down to mm -hmm. develop the codes and or whatever. Yeah, that's that's very that's spot on. Thanks a lot. Um, Iyanu and Ore, who wants to go first? Okay. Um, as everyone has rightly said, the job description of a product manager is not to code. So, like to perform your duty your duty, you don't need to know how to code. It has nothing to do with knowing how to code, although it might help um, to be able to relate with the technical team, engineers, ETC, you know, to understand what they're saying and relate properly with them. But um, knowing how to code is not a necessity. All right. Yeah. Thank you lots. All right. Okay. Um, someone asked the question. I think this is a very valid question. Lots of people have this question. Um, I think I've asked this question before, if I switched into products. Is there any certification needed before entering into a product manager role? Um, so no, you don't need to be certified. It's not like um, accounting that you need ACC or ICANN to practice or like you need a license to study medicine. I don't think you absolutely need a certification. A certification is nice. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think I'm certified in um, product management according to AIPMN. But before I did that certification exam, I already started practicing. So even if you're, even if you, it's just a nice to have, it's just to say that, ah, yes, I have certification. It's nice to put doctor, CIPM, AIPM, have those wrong extra things, but no. But if you want to do it, absolutely, you can go ahead and do that. Somebody asked a question, please expand product man road mapping as a skill. So the reason why I say product road mapping as a skill is basically as a product manager, your product is um, evolving over time. Um, I think it's more of a responsibility than a skill. Um, permit me to say that, right? Your product is going to look differently over time and expectations will change. Um, so as a product manager, there are new features that you need to add, things you now have to remove if you need to pivot your product. So at each time, you need to be able to draw the roadmap of your product to fit business requirement and business strategy. What's your product going to look like at this time? However, I'm going to say that if you're doing a product roadmap, you should be careful to not attach exact timelines to it. Um, I think that's a bad thing to do, um, but some organizations will ask you to do that. As much as possible, I think you should add, um, it's better to do it as quarters than to put exact dates. So you can say in Q1, in Q2, in the first half, in the second half. Um, and then I think at the same time, instead of, you can have features, right? But I think instead of features, it should be what problem are you trying to solve at that time? Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, 
So I'm going to answer the question of should product managers be technical or not, but Ishala, what's your question for we move on? Yeah, that is just my question. Um, right. I am education if it is needed because um, when I was making my research about uh, product management, I was actually referred to uh, product desk. Um, um, can you hold on? Let me check it. Okay. Okay, product.com and stuff like that. I have to check the website and apply for or a course and from there they will give me a certificate uh, as a product manager as a, like a certified product manager after the class and um, from there if i get into a startup um, um, business then i can proceed get another certificate to become a senior product uh, manager blah 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 like that so i'm just asking like okay is it necessary like to for recognition of probably to be seen as someone that is really into the business, like into like that, that knows what he's doing as a product manager. Like, is it really necessary to have a certificate? No, I, I don't think I don't think it's important for you to have a certificate, right? Because um, you have the certificates, right? But did you really understand? Do you really understand what your job as a product? manager is like are you so like the certification might not even necessarily give you a job do you understand like is it nice to have like it's nice to say oh ishala i as ishala i wrote this exam and i passed it's nice that i have the certificate right i know that audacity gives certificates because i think it's um the density product management um track is very very immersive it's like very very um comprehensive as well so it's like a nice to have, but like now you have the dusty certificate. Are you going to present it as a job interview? No. What they really want to know is what as do you know your job as a product manager? Do you have any transferable skills as a product manager? Are you willing to learn as a product manager? So, which is why I said that it's a nice to have. It's not compulsory. I don't think that you need that to break into product management. If I'm going to, if you're going to apply for any job. You can take my word for it. You can go and do your, just go to LinkedIn and look at the job section and look at anywhere that they ask you for certifications. Most people don't ask you. They will ask you, they will most likely they'll be saying, do you have three years? Do you have a year experience? Do you understand your job? Do you have any transferable skills? Literally, that's what it is. And you can also ask people that do interviews. But yeah, I think that's my stance on that. Um, I mean, that's, what is your question? Okay, um, you mentioned something in your like skills that, or I don't know if to call it skills that we are supposed to actually know for us to function well as a product manager, where you mentioned Trello um, and some Ooh. other stuff like that. So I don't know, I don't really know how to like kind of differentiate these things. Like I know that there is Miro and I don't know if it's the same thing or it does the same thing as, I don't know if if you can do it in such a way as to help us, you know, categorize it, okay. then send. So that we don't learn like the same thing for the same. Okay. Um. So the thing is like some of these, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so for our next session or next class, right? I'm going to group them and talk about them. Well, some of these tools are can be used for multiple purposes. So I know you mentioned my role, um, but what you can do, and I don't know, so there's a designer on this call that is this Figma, and on Figma there's FigJam, right? On FigJam, what FigJam does, what Mario does, right? Jira and Trello, they do the same thing. You can also use Mario, and you can also use FigJam for, tra for managing tasks. So typically, I think, it's around like, what is your preference? Is you no, know, I don't think that there's any do or die tool, but I think that's what we do ahead of next class. So please um, just remind me, just in case I forget. All just right. Um, okay, thank you so much, um, Tomasi. So my question is, um, 
about um, the business side of product management. I also, I, you know, my research has, you know, shown that, you know, MBA, like having a master's in business administration or any business course or any business idea is actually very good for, for you to be a very good um, product manager. So like, for me, that's coming from a pure technical role. So it's like, <clears throat> like, how do I understand the business side of product so that, you know, in terms of like um, the value, um, that's the monetary side of the product. Like, how do I, what do I need to know or to get? I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes, I, I completely understand. So mm -hmm. do you think it's relevant for us? Is it relevant to have an MBA or the business? I think that is nice to have, you have an MBA. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't think that for me personally, I want to go and do an MBA just because of product management. I think that if I'm going to get an MBA, it's going to be for other things. And I, which is why I said that's like everything in product management is something that you learn over time. If you have it already, it's good for you. Because for example, I didn't, I don't have a business background. I said it earlier, I did sociology and there's no like really, there's no business course that I did, right? Because at the end of the day, your, your job technically is not to draw out like business, um, to be fully involved in business. You're supposed to work with a business manager, right? And I think what you want to avoid is you telling the business manager what your job is. However, you want to be able to contribute um, you want to be able to give meaningful contributions to this person. If you want to do an MBA, that's nice. Some jobs, I think Google has MBA um, in their in their job um, section, but I don't think that you necessarily need an MBA because at the end of the day, I think what everybody's looking for is transferable skills. I might have an MBA. I might just be good at reading and cramming not necessarily understanding what the concept is. I don't know if like that sort of makes sense to you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so as much as possible, I think it's more about your transferable skills, but if you want to get an MBA, you totally should, it's, it's quite nice. Um, yeah, so I asked a question earlier that if it's um, compulsory to be technical, like is it important for a PM to be technical or not? So my answer to that question is no yes, neither as you know. I think the answer is it depends. It depends on your role. It depends on what you have to do. What defines technical? Who is, like, what does it mean for someone to be technical or not technical, right? Um, I know that Jessica mentioned that she's technical. I think she writes code or she's writes code, right? Technical to some people means that you must be, you must have software engineering background, meaning that you should, you should have written code before or like you're currently writing code, right? While technical to some people is that if your developer is speaking developer language, you should be able to understand, right? So it depends. So like depending there's some products that might require you to be technical. So if you, if in some companies, right, if they're building an API product or they are building a product for software developers, they might want you to have software engineering background, but I don't necessarily think that you need to be technical to be a product manager. At the end of the day, you might be technical, but not be great at communication. And that does not mean that you do a good job, right? But then again, it's arguable. So that's that. And again, I, I think so, it was uh, Esther that mentioned that you also want to understand your product, your developers so that they're not lying to you. Um, to treat it like you need to know now, Sometimes you find that developers lie a lot. Um, trust me, it's not you, it's them. <laughs> That's why like you have like engineering managers to help you manage the engineers better. Um, but, and I think that being a technical PM can also come with technical depth. And what does that mean? It means that sometimes like you might want to tell the engineer what their job is. It's not your, I don't know that it's in a product manager's place to tell a, an engineer that this is your job. Your own is to help them understand and deliver on their task. So I don't think you should go and say, this is your job. Like, please don't do that. They're going to get very angry. Um, but yes, um, I think that's that. So we're going to have another Kahoot session. I think that if you missed the first one before, um, this time, please don't miss it. I think like we can have just a number of 10 people 
Um, so how it works is I'm going to display my the questions on my screen. I'm going to display the pin. So you copy the pin and you put it on your end, right? I'm going to share the link again, right? So I'll show the questions on my end and you can pick the answers. So it's always like the fastest person. Don't worry, there's no winner, there's no loser. So yeah, so I'll share my screen. I'll share the game pin. Just put your, what's it called? Put your new pin. I've put the link on the chat and I've put the game pin so you can just join now. I will share my screen. So there's no winner, there's no loser. I just want to make sure that we understood what I was trying to communicate. Yes. I think I need just one more person. Okay, so I'm going to start now. So the questions are on my screen, then you pick the answers on your end. So the first question is the concept of product management was introduced by Johnson and Justin, from Tangambo, PZ Pizans, PD13. Answer one person missed it. Oh my god, guys! Nice, Rachel is top of the table. Next question Brand men are also project managers, marketing managers, product managers, brand managers. A lot of people might get this wrong. <laughs> I'm going. Hey, okay, you guys got this right. They are product managers, please. Um, that's where it started from. The first question was a cheat for this one. So next question. Wow, people are moving up. Nice. Which of these tools are used by PMs? This is a trick question. Hey, right all the answers are correct actually um yeah so uh -uh, jessica madu well done okay dla is top of the table now so we have two more questions Product management is cross functional in nature. Is it true or is it false? Yep, it's true. Cross functional means that you are talking with multiple people. Please, if you got this wrong, I hope you know this now. Okay. A product manager works closely with engineering, design, and sales. Is this true or is this false? Anybody misses this out very accurate. Okay. Wow. Nice one. This is the last question. Who is credited for popularizing product management and in what year? Mark Vitti is in 1950, Neil Mark Erroy in 1930, Neil Mark Erroy in 1931, none of the above. Oh, 
nice, nice. Well done, guys. What was acne and abdomen? I'm very happy that women did it. Nice one, guys. I think so. For people that did not join, right? I think we should be assigning rewards to these things. So if you win consistently for three classes, I owe you something. So yes. FYI, I won twice today. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, right. So I, I think the main reason why I'm introducing Kahoot for this is to make sure that learning is as enjoyable as possible and you understand what I have said. And if you have any questions, you can also ask. Um, so is there like a class? I think you molested there was a class rep or something like that. Is there anybody? Is there a current class rep? at the moment okay. i'm the current class rep oh hi my name is Ori. yes nice um is there an assistant was it just you? yes yano yano is the assistant nice nice okay so i'm going to be dividing i don't know how to do this right um i want to divide this into a group of twos uh, maybe I should do that. Are we currently divided into two or like or just one person? Just one. Okay, so this is what I, think I would do, right? Ore and Yanu are correct, right? These are going to be two groups. Um, I think we are about 26 minus me and Imole. That's 24. Um, can you guys pick 12 people in your teams, right? So just have that for next class. I'm going to share so, like something that we should do for the next, for the next session. Um, so what are the different stages of a product development cycle? I think, let, me, let me just put that in the chat, right? Um, Yanu and Ore are responsible for this. So you have to split your, you have to make teams of two right? Um, and you guys are going to have to come up with the different stages of the product development life cycle and do a presentation for the next class. So as much as possible, please get in touch with these people. And um, yeah, I think this should be a WhatsApp group. I'm on WhatsApp, sorry guys. But if you have any questions, you can send me an email or yeah, you can send me a message on LinkedIn as well. Um, or reach out to Imole, he's going to tell you how to reach me. But yeah, so the question is in the group, is on the chat, right? Uh, understand what a, what, a pro, what a product manager does during the different stages of a product development life cycle. So what's the product development life cycle? What are the different stages? What do you have to do and stuff like that? We're going to have like a, um, a brief presentation um, and we're going to start like real life products um, stuff in the next class. Are there any questions before I call you today? Oh, hi, Molly, you're back. Yes, I am. I am back and well done, well done. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave you to it and uh, carry on, please. Yeah, I think we're about done for today. Is there any, does anyone have any questions before like we call you today? Yeah, I have a question, please. Yes, please. Yes, so uh, there are other members that are not currently in the call today. So for the group division, are we going with those that are available for the session today or everybody in the group chat? Um, so how many people are there in the group chat, right? What do you say? How many people are there in the group chat? Oh, let me just check quickly. I think I was, okay, 70. That's a lot. So that's the life part. I think you should do it per, um, per people in the chat, right? Um, so this is what I would do. I'm going to create a Google form, right? Um, in the Google form, people have to pick between group A and group B. I'm not going to say who's going to be on group A. I'm not going to say who's going to be on group B, right? So just pick randomly and then you guys have to do this and then I'll communicate this with Molly and then you have to do that. Um, Yana, do you think that solves that problem? Yeah, that makes sense. We just have to find a way to communicate. Uh, yeah, other than that, 
what if people pick, uh, let's say everybody picks group A and maybe very few people pick group B? Then we're going to have to randomize it. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so we, we, we should not open it to, to everyone. I think we should um, ah! list out everyone and then, um, and then randomly um, assign them to, to the groups and just let them know that this is the group you belong to. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think that would be the way to go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, then also, um, we would. Um, Tommy Singh, can you please? Uh, okay, don't worry. I, I think we would need to share the video of today's session with everyone in the group. That way, uh, folks who, who could not like um, attend today can also, you know, watch the video and get a lot more context about, you know, why folks are getting into groups and also. Um, you'll be able to handle the, the assignment a lot better. Um, and then of course, feel included, which is very, very important. Um, so uh, that is one thing I just wanted to add to it, so yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, right, I think we are done for today. Right. Well, sorry, sorry, Tony. One last thing I wanted to say, guys, 